All right, in this lesson, we'll continue our exploration of the PDCimCat method, which combines multiple pandas objects, such as data frames, together into one. Let's begin by re-executing our code to load our four CSVs to their four variables. And let's quickly review the concat method that we introduced in the last lesson. So as you may recall, we did PDCimCat. We opened our parentheses. We gave it a list of the data frame objects that we wanted to concatenate or combine together. So we did week one and week two in that order, and we got this resulting data frame. After that, we did the ignore index parameter. We set that to true in order to generate a fresh index. Now, sometimes what you want to do is combine two data frames, but preserve a certain element that identifies what data set it came from. When you think about it, when we combine these two data sets, especially if we ignore the index, we're basically losing uh, a sense of where the data is coming from. If, if this data, for example, becomes jumbled up, if we sort the values by customer ID in our Concata data frame, we're not going to know which sales came from week one, which sales came from week two, and so on. So we need to find a way to combine these two, but yet retain an identifier that tells us which data frame it came from, either the week one or the week two. So for that, there is a parameter on the Concat method called keys. So I'm going to click in here and press Shift Tab to show it to you. It is right here. And what keys can take is a list of values, probably string values in our case, and those values are going to be used to identify which data frame uh, our uh, values came from. So as an example, I'm going to use the keys parameter here. I'm going to give it an argument of a list, and I'm just going to give it two strings, week one and week two. Now these can be whatever you'd like. I'm just creating two different strings. But basically, each one of these strings is going to correspond to uh, one of the items that's passed in our list as the first argument. So this week one string is going to correspond to this week one data frame, and this week two string is going to correspond to this week two data frame. Of course, I chose similar names just so that it makes sense, but this doesn't have to be week one or week two. This can be A and B, or foo and bar, or you know, good week, bad week, whatever you want. And when I execute this, keep in mind that I've ignored the... Um, ignore index parameter here. What happens is I'm actually going to get a multi-index data frame and you can see that the index of our uh, original data frames has been kept but we've also added this external layer, this external uh, additional index. And as I scroll down you'll see that it says week one. It basically says what I added as that string and that's identifying the values from my original week one data frame. And predictably as I scroll down when we get to the end of the data set this represents the data that's coming from the week two data frame. And as I mentioned, this doesn't have to be written ex explicitly to be just like the names of our, of our data frames. We can do something like, you know, A and B here. And all that it's going to do is just store A and B out there in the most outer layer of that multi-index, just so that we have a sense of identifying where it comes from. So basically what this allows us to do is essentially solve our problem by creating a multi-index data frame where the outer layer is going to represent what data frame it's coming from and the inner layer is basically going to do what we just did which is combine the two um, indexes together. Keep in mind here when we use this approach we do have to disregard that ignore index because each one's um, each data frames uh, regular index labels will be kept just the way they are. We no longer need to um, tell it, you know, uh, to, to combine them and f form a new index because now they're each lodged under their own respective outer index, in this case either A or B, so there's no confusion about where the data comes from. We do have, for example, two values of 225 in our inner index, but we know that one of them is going to belong to the A category and one of them is going to belong to the B category, so we're all safe there. So what I'm going to do here is, now that I'm satisfied with this multi-index, I'm just going to assign it to a variable, let's call it sales. And then once you have that multi-index data frame, you can just use the standard selection methods that we've explored before, such as IX, to extract the proper data frame. So for example, if I do sales IX, the very first argument that I can give here is the outer index, so the outer layer. So I have A and B now, so if I do A, that's going to give me the data frame that's basically week one, because that's the one that I've identified with the string of A. And similarly, if I do something like B, I'm going to get that other outer layer of B, and so on and so forth. Um, what I can also do is specify uh, multiple things here. So for example, if I want to specify uh, week two, but I also want to do, let's say, an index position of uh, 240, 
I have to provide that argument as a tuple to my very first argument of my ix method. So here, for example, I'm going to say I want the outer layer to be b. And then what I also want is to get the index position at, let's say, 240. I'm going to close that tuple with my parentheses. And basically what I'm going to get is it's going to reference that first outer layer, which is B, which is my week two sales. It's then going to go within that layer to the row with the index position of 240. And then it's going to pull out the values for uh, that row. It's going to represent the column names as the index labels here and those values as the values here. And predictably, just like in the past, if we want to reference a specific value, what we can do is uh, give it a column as our second argument to the ix method so for example if i want the customer id that's going to get me the customer id of the person in week two who had an index position of uh, 240. so as you can see this is basically an, a really a really good solution to be able to maintain kind of the knowledge of where each of our concatenated objects fall within the larger one that's just been combined. Whenever we just do a regular concat, we mix and match everything together and we, we lose sight of, of the original data. Sometimes it doesn't matter. So maybe your, your data requires you, let's say in this case, to just combine all the sales so we can analyze them as a whole. But in the case that you do want to preserve uh, the original uh, state of the data and kind of know where it comes from, this keys parameter can be particularly helpful in the PDConcat method.